well welcome back i know it's been a while um in this video what we're going to be talking about is how to get different kinds of cells in our collection view so as you see in this screenshot here we have a suggestions suggestions for you area where we'll suggest a couple users in this case we're suggesting three users for you to follow now if you remember from our last video we set up this part of the collection view that's basically displaying our actual feed and this will be a way to introduce your user to new people that they should follow so let's go ahead and jump right into xcode so i can show you what i did to get this set up okay so as you see here i created this nib file and actually what i did is i just added a bunch of different elements to the cell um i have a view here and on top of the view i have an image view i have a label and i have a button now the way you're going to go going to go about creating this nib file is and file you're going to go to new new file and it's the same way we did the last cell for the post but you're going to do a coco touch class and when you get to the next screen it's going to ask you for what, what are you trying to create here so we're actually going to be trying to create a collection view cell actually a ui collection view cell You're gonna name it whatever you want here. You're gonna check this box here to create this nib file. And that, that's that's gonna give you this screen or this um, this uh, builder here for it. Um, and then you can lay out whatever you want. This doesn't have to necessarily be the suggestion, um, but any other cell that you want to add to your collection view. All right, so with that, it comes with this file, the suggestion collection view cell is gonna be as type. And then I just basically hooked up all of the outlets. And this is, I'm just actually, just a test for myself printing something, but here's, you're actually gonna do some type of action when the user clicks the follow button, maybe adding them to some type of queue um, to be approved for the user. And I'm just on the awake from nib. I probably could have did this in um, a different place, but I'm just going and rounding the image out. So, just with these two lines and I should have posted a video already how to do this pretty simple to do um, I'm not sure if away from it would be the greatest place to do it but why not you know it's kind of the first thing that kind of pops up all right so now that we've created our cell what we're going to want to do is if you remember from the last video we created a post model and the post model is basically it has all of our information about what a post is and down here all the way at the bottom well of course making sure that we import IG list kit and at the bottom we um, extended created these extensions for post for equatable and IG list differable diffable so in our new cell I have this user class and it has the information for each of the items each of those three posts are locations where we can add new users so then initialization um, of course, I would not recommend doing it this way. I would probably do something, maybe like another list or a collection and, you know, you only have one of these. And, um, but for time's sake, I just did three. Uh, here I have an, another extension, of course, the equatable again, a way to tell if the users are the same. And we're gonna use that user ID. And here I have IG list diffable, and it's basically the same as uh, we did for the post. And that video will be linked below if you're looking for a little bit more detail. Okay, so now that we created our model, the next thing we're gonna wanna do is create a section controller. And from our last video, the way we do that is we're going to file, new file. We're gonna do a Cocoa Touch class. And if you've imported IG list kit, you can go ahead and start typing IG list and all list. And then this S for section controller, you're gonna name it and just go ahead and hit next. Since I've already done that, I'm not gonna create another file. As you remember, we created one for our last file and we're basically doing the same exact thing that here. We're importing IG list kit and reusable for our nib. 
The only difference here is that we have a new model that we're using. So this is going to be a user. We're still returning one cell and we still haven't done the dynamic programming or dynamic uh, grab for the width and height. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. I would definitely suggest you do that for the event that your screen changes. You don't want to have like these kind of hard coded values in there. And we'll talk about that another time. Um, so the cell, building the cell up. So we're doing the same thing, except for this time we're doing suggested collection view cell. Cause that's the, that's the cell that we actually have set up here. Suggested collection view cell. And then this dot reuse identifier is a uh, courtesy of our um, reusable. Now I just put some hard text in here. Of course you probably wouldn't be doing this. You'd probably pull it from a database, Firebase or a SQL database and get your information. And of course, we're gonna make sure that it's of that same type before we do any of that. And then return the cell, and it is um, being returned as a user object. Now, we didn't do anything for this did select item at because we probably won't even need this. So, if we're going to be putting action on the button to follow, maybe even, I don't think we would need this. I can't think of a reason we would need this in that case. But, or maybe even go, well, you can go to the user's profile, of course. I guess that makes sense. Okay, so now that we've created our cell, we've created a model, and we've created our user section controller. The only thing left is to go into our main feed view controller. And what we're going to do is we're going to, one, you, this is where you're going to pull in your data for your suggested user. So say you have it in Firebase or... Um, uh, some other database and you're going to be pulling that information. So you're going to do that just like kind of we did here with the load data. And then we probably want to pull this out of here because, you know, just to make it a little cleaner, but you would just call your data. Um, and then you would store everything into an array. So the, the magic happens down here in this extension for the IG list adapter data source. We have this, items feed items now if you remember from last video the only thing that we had in here was this feed array which basically included our post information and it was um as an ig list diffable array but now what we're doing is we're just adding our new data that's if you had data because we're not actually populating that data but you add your new list or your new data that is ig list diffable because it's part of your model here. Now you could do something really cool as far as maybe sorting it by date and depending on date, that's how things appear. It's just not all of this stuff is at the top, then this stuff is next. You can kind of do a little sort here. Um, and then the last thing we have to, of course, um, account for is the fact that we have multiple different types of items in this collection and they have different user section, well, they have different section controllers. So in this list adapter, we're gonna take this object that we're getting and we're gonna figure out, is this object a post or a user? And if it's a post, or if it's a user, we're gonna go ahead and return our section controller that is responsible for our users, or our suggested users. Otherwise, we're going to return our posts because we only have two, we only have one or the other. Now, if you have multiple, of course you would check on each of the objects. So that way the appropriate section controller would work. Now, if your program starts bombing out because of this is because you probably didn't um, switch on the object. Okay, so I think that's it as far as what we need in order to get this to work. You wanna make sure you import IG list kit. You wanna make sure you watch the video before um, to make sure that everything makes sense to you. Uh, and the next video, I'll probably go, be going back to some of the database stuff as far as handling follow. So when someone does click that, being able to follow that user um, or getting some type of pending request to follow a user. So next time we will be doing that. If you guys have any questions or comments, please comment below. So I will see you guys next time and I go hope you guys have a great night. Bye.